Okay, everybody, again, Serafina from Serafina's World. This is my color theory series. This is class one, where we'll discuss the basics. I restarted the video because it flipped my video. I'm not sure why, so let me check my computer and make sure it actually looks right on it also. It looks like it's normal to me here, but you never know. Okay, I'm not sure why it's flipping it sideways. Everything looks correct up here, so I'm just going to go with it and go ahead. Um, when you come on, please go ahead and say hi. If you're watching it now, welcome. If you're watching it later, if you would just type the word later into the feed. Um, I typed that other word in there the other day in somebody's feed and I got a notice from Facebook that said I was doing something wrong against the community standards. So I guess the R-E-P-L-A-Y, even if you're somebody actually watching it, is a verboten word now. So I have my colors from Dixie Bell just lined up here, um, matching my color wheel. I'm going to move them out of the way so I can start talking about the color wheel and I will bring them in as I go. And I will bring this down so the color wheel is closer and you can see better. And hopefully I don't shake this too much. Sorry about that. My lighting looks really strange. It was working earlier. I'm not sure what is going on with that. It looks fine on the screen, so I'm going to go ahead and go. Maybe it's just my phone putting it on a little bit dim. Okay. So, a little bit about myself. Um, I have been obsessed with color just about ever since I can remember. And something weird with my computer. Okay, it still says I'm live. I'm going to keep going. So the first time I remember actually consciously really thinking about color and what it does was sometime during grade school when the, someone had talked about, and I think it was in my class, about prison pink. And what the heck is prison pink? Prison pink, they did a color study and tried to figure out how to calm down people who were in jail. So they came up with a variety of theories and found that if they put somebody in a pink room, it will have a tendency to be calming on them. But the reverse can happen too. If they stay in that pink room too long, which is 30 minutes or more, if I remember correctly, it has an agitating effect. The reason that is, is pink is actually just a derivation of red. Red has a tendency to be excitable for people. I'm trying to pull my Facebook back up here again. Something strange. No surprises going on. It's worked well before. Hi, Karen. Good. Yay. I actually see somebody's here. In the live. Thanks for coming. Um, so, with the prison pink, um, that was kind of my start of just really an obsession of thinking about color and what does colors do in our lives and how do we coordinate it and how do we put it in our wardrobe? What is the psychology of color? Um, I studied color for a lot of years. It's just been one of my things that I absolutely love, somewhat like rocks. Of course, color and rocks also go together. Um, so... The way color theory can help you is either in your own home when you want to put things together that look right but you're not quite sure in your wardrobe when you want to put some color combinations together to achieve a specific look if you are a designer of any type your digital design your paint colors and we'll even get into later in the series we'll get into how to set a mood with your color like your blues and your sea colors are nice and calming, but what if I want something exciting? What if I want people to encourage 
people to eat, like say at McDonald's or Hardee's, what if I want to curb my appetite? Well, curb your appetite, use a blue plate. So with um, color, like I said, I've studied for a long time. I studied it and did digital art and fiber art and everything else before I ever took an art class in my life. I didn't even take art in high school. I was one of those band kids. Um, so I never really thought about myself being an artist until somebody actually asked me when I was in occupational therapy class in 1997 and I was painting a canvas. They asked, are you an artist? And I actually really took a while to think about that and then finally realized that, oh, wow, yeah, I actually am an artist. I've been doing art for a long time. That was when I was about 27. It was still several years before I decided to take all of my Votex schools, my military schools, my pieces of college classes and put it into a formal degree. I had been studying um, computer science and economics and needed to go do an online program. And when I went to do an online program, those were not a possibility. I decided to, what the heck, go for it and do a Bachelor of Fine Arts. So somewhere in my mid-30s, I did a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Digital Design and had more instruction in color theory there and then in web design and then went on to do a Master's in IT and had lots of fun with that. So, if you remember, maybe in school you heard about Roy G. Biv when talking about the rainbow. So rainbow colors, the most important thing you can remember to put things in order is Roy, R-O-Y, G, Biv. So it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And if you remember that order, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, then if you don't even have a color wheel near you, you're going to be able to start mixing and matching colors. So let's start first with primary colors. Primary colors are considered primary because they are pure in their state and nothing is mixed in with them. The primary color red, yellow, and blue. Those are considered our primary colors for the normal color wheel. If you're looking at a toner, it would be cyan, yellow, magenta, and a black thrown in there. And I will talk about the CYMK and RGB colors and Pantones in a later class also. So starting out with my red, yellow, and blue, what that looks like in Dixie Belle colors is Honky Tonk Red, Cobalt Blue, and my Daisy Yellow. These colors right here are your building, basic building blocks of everything. With these colors, you mix them together to get your secondary colors. You mix them with the secondary colors to get your tertiary colors. Everything from here is going to be a building block. If you only know one thing about color, you know you're always going to be able to put red, yellow, and blue together. And if you look at the, the superheroes, how many superheroes look red, blue, and yellow? I think it's really interesting. It's also a vibrant color scheme. It's a fun color scheme to use. It's used a lot in children's rooms because it is a fun color scheme. Um, one of the people that I want to point out, if you start looking at uh, art and the projects, the canvases, the um, different pieces of furniture people make, start looking at what colors they have. What I want to look at is in Dion's, if you look at her colors, most of her color schemes are a basic red, blue, and yellow, which are always going to work together. It might be a little bit darker red, a little bit darker blue, a little bit lighter yellow, but overall, a lot of her color scheme is based on the red, blue, yellow, and that's why it always works for her again and again and again. All right, let me take a breath, take a drink. I apologize if you hear my air conditioner. I have the temperature set up as high as it can go without me actually melting in here. For whatever reason, my air conditioner is noisy. It's even noisy in my bedroom. All 
Okay, so secondary colors, primary red, blue, yellow, secondary colors are going to be, I call it purple, the color wheels call it violet, orange, and green. Let me put my orange over here, my green, and what I'm calling my violet today. The orange I have is Florida orange, the green I have is tree frog green, and amethyst from Dixie Bell. The way I get my orange, which is the secondary color, is I mix my red and my yellow together. Red and yellow make orange. The way I get green is I mix my blue and my yellow together. And the way I get purple is I mix my purple, my red and my blue together to get purple. Now, as you might be able to guess, if I put a little bit more blue in it, it'll go one way. If I put a little more red in it, it'll get more red, violet, purple. And so, those are your primary and secondary colors. Now, tertiary colors is exactly what it sounds. It's the third set of colors. That third set of colors red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, blue violet, and red violet. You'll notice these fall between your primary red and your secondary color violet. So you're going to mix your primary and your secondary colors to get that in-between color of red violet. Let me put some examples out here. This is a yellow orange, a yellow green, blue green. My blue violet, I'm using a lighter color today because I don't have one of the dark ones. This is a red violet, and there we go, it's my flamingo, that's my red orange. So the yellow orange example I'm using is Colonel Mustard. Yellow orange I make by mixing orange and yellow together, my secondary color and my primary color to get that tertiary color. The limeade is a wonderful yellow green color, just as you may think. It sits in between yellow and green. I'm mixing my secondary color green with my primary color yellow. Of course, we have to have mermaid tail as the blue green. There couldn't be any other color. Blue green in between blue and green. I mix my secondary color green with my primary color blue and I get blue green. Now, not talking about adding whites or anything in there at this point. You can always make them lighter or darker and then we open up a whole rainbow of colors. Over here I chose blueberry as my blue violet. It is a blue violet, but it is a lighter blue violet and it works really well. So. I would mix my blue and my violet color together, but to get this, I would lighten it up a little bit. And let's see, I have Plum Crazy. This is awesome red violet. It's a beautiful tertiary color. It's definitely much more on the red side of the red violet. And another wonderful color, Flamingo. Definitely a red orange. So, let me get these out of the way, and all of those colors, I made sure match the names that are on the color wheel that I uploaded, so you can print out. Let's see. Look at my notes. Okay. So, let me get a couple pencils here. Now, the colors... We, we did the basics, red, yellow, blue, green, violet, orange, and then our tertiary colors. So next, how do we start mixing the colors? Well, you can do a tone on tone and wear all red head to toe, and you're going to do pretty good. But let's mix a couple colors. And let me flip this over because I've got it, that graphic on the other side. Make sure that comes up right. There's always a bit of a delay here. Okay, so let me pull red. This is why I suggest getting one of these color wheels. Um, 
Like I said, I bought this one off of Amazon for like five bucks. You can get them at Michael's, but Amazon brought it to my house and it was much easier for me. Okay, so when I say a complementary color, that means simply that the color is the exact opposite, 180 degrees away from the color that you want as your main color. Red and green are complementary colors. Blue and orange are complementary colors. Violet and yellow are complementary colors. Um, do you notice when little old ladies have a bit of a violet tinge to their hair because they use the violet shampoo? They use the violet shampoo to get rid of the yellowing in the hair. So color theory goes into how to color your hair also. If you have unwanted orange highlights, you get a blue toner to help tone that down. So we've got red violet and yellow green is going to go well together. Blue green and red orange is going to go very well together. And this hides one, so let me turn it. Blue violet and yellow orange is going to go really great together also. So these are tried and true. You can always pick them up. You're going to put them together. They're going to look great. They're going to look great in your clothes. They're going to look great online. They're going to look great in your paint. Hi, Kimberly. Okay, let's do what's called a split complementary. Just like the complementary color, let me pull my graphic around here to make it, let's do a blue. Let me make blue our main color. Okay, so just like the complementary was exactly across from each other, what happens with a split complementary is exactly what it sounds. It splits. Instead of being exactly across, it splits off. So I'm going to call that a chicken foot. And that's probably going to be the easiest way to remember it. If you're on the top of the color wheel and you do a chicken foot on the bottom directly across and pick a color on either side of it, you're going to do really well with your color combination. So a split complementary for blue would be blue plus yellow orange plus red orange. And if you want to put orange in there, you can do that too. So let's see. Let's give us a green split complementary. The complement to green is red, so red violet and red orange. Let's see. Let's do yellow orange. So I'm going to get my yellow orange, my kernel mustard, and directly across is the blue violet, but I'm doing a split, so I'm going to put violet with that, and on the other side is blue. So that makes a nice color combination. Maybe not a great color combination for everybody, but it is a very nice color combination. Let's do a red violet. So red violet, I have plum crazy. I'm going to add green and I'm going to add my yellow. That is a very nice color combination also. So I don't see if y'all have any questions or anything. If you have questions, please go ahead and type them in. Um, I wasn't quite sure how long this was going to take me um, this evening or how short it was going to take me. So let's look at the other side of the color wheel again. And if you have, there we go, that's what I want. If you have this type of color wheel, it's going to tell you what colors are warm colors. So everything from red, violet, and yellow this way is a warm color. Everything from violet and yellow green that way is a cool color. Why do you care that it's warm or cool? 
Well, you may not care, but <laughs> it'll actually help when you're doing paintings. If you want something to recede, you want it to go back. Say you're doing your design wall and you don't want the wall to be featured, but you want it to be in the picture. You're going to want a cool color that's going to pull it back. It's not going to overpower whatever you're placing in front of it, be a painting or be a piece of furniture. In your furniture, if you want to highlight something or in a painting, if you want it to be more prominent, your lighter colors and your warmer colors are going to go proceed, which means they're going to come out to you more. So they're going to help give you depth to what you're working on. Let's see, what else do I have on here? Uh, I want to do analogous colors today. So remember I said Roy G. Biv, if that's all you remember, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, you will have a great color combination. So what an analogous color means, it's simply colors right beside each other. If I do Roy, red, red, orange, and orange, I'm going to have a decent color combination. If I want to go the other way and do red, red, violet, and violet, I'm going to have a decent color combination. They're not going to be super loud or exciting. They're not going to have a lot of contrast in them. They're going to be very similar in color. All right. I think that is all I had planned for this first session. Because um, when I do the next one, I'm actually going to give you guys the color wheel that has the Dixie Bell colors on them. I took the colors that I have um, at the vendor shop as well as the color chart and put them in a color wheel so it'll help mix them up. So what kind of questions do you guys have or do you have any questions? Should I talk faster or slower or is this about right? Um, this is about 25 minutes long, 20, 25 minutes. Is that about right for the time frame? That feels about right for me, although theoretically I should do 45-minute Facebooks. Um, I'm less concerned about doing 45-minute Facebooks and more concerned about doing really good content in digestible chunks because I know I don't sit and watch whole videos all the time. I actually kind of fast-forward through them. Okay, one more split complimentary. Red and a blue green. And a limeade. But I just want one of the split complementaries. And that's okay, I don't have to pick all three, I can pick one. So, how awesome is it when you see coral and turquoise jewelry? That always goes together. So, if you don't have a color wheel, you don't know, you're not sure, look out into nature and see what colors are on flowers. Look at jewelry and see what designers are putting together and see what you like. So just start noticing around, look at different designers, look at their furniture, look at their paintings. What colors are you the most drawn to? What colors do you find the most pleasing? And we'll work on trying to find you a personal color palette that feels good to you. That's in, that's your comfort, that's your favorite colors. Now, I know I tend to always like hot pink and turquoise and throw a few other colors in there around it. I tend to like brights. I like the neons of the 80s. You know, color just kind of makes me happy. But I also need a downtime space so I can't have all of the super crazy bright colors in all of my rooms, or I would just be wound up all the time. All right, everybody, thank you. 
This is going to be uploaded on YouTube also later. I'm going to leave it here on Facebook for you. And please, if you're watching it later, just type the word later in there for me. And any questions you have, tag me and I'll get right back to you. Thank you.